What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Broadway Joel, the voice of Dominican boxing. And, yo, I, I really am the voice of Dominican boxing. If y'all know me personally, y'all know I hate the cold. Y'all know I wouldn't leave New York City, where it was in the 50s, to Minnesota right after a snowstorm if I wasn't the voice of Dominican boxing. I'm, I'm doing this just off the strength of... That, you know, I want to show uh, Elvis Rodriguez some love. I want to give you guys the content because I know that's a lot of you guys' favorite fighter and stuff like that. And you guys want to know what's going on. You know, I'll get you some behind the scenes that other people couldn't get but the voice can. You know what I'm saying? So I'm definitely out here for this. This is my first vlog. I never did a vlog. Uh, I figured I'm like, yo, I'm out here in Minnesota. Not much to do. is right before the weigh-in. I was like, you know what? Let me do a... Let me do a vlog. So first, let me talk about my flight, man. My flight, <laughs> uh, it got delayed uh, 40 minutes. So, uh, you know, you got to take, you got to roll with the punches. I ended up sleeping a lot on the plane ride. I slept for like about an hour. The, pl the plane ride was about, uh, I believe it was two hours. I don't remember. I, I was sleeping and it was delayed. It was early in the morning. I don't know, but it was... I, I slept for most of it, which thank God. But one thing I do remember is when I landed, the pilot was like, oh, you know, welcome to Minnesota, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hope you enjoy your stay. And if you're from here, welcome home, you know. Oh, and by the way, it is seven degrees out. Seven degrees? That shit's in the single digits? Like, yo, seven and, uh, you know, apparently, so uh, I got here, the, today's Friday, today's the day of the weigh-in. Apparently, it snowed from Tuesday to Thursday, totaling up to two feet of snow, two feet, 24 inches. That's, that's, that's a lot. But I'm surprised, I guess out here they used to, I, I mean, to be fair, I'm staying downtown, I'm staying in the city. So maybe over here it ain't as bad as like, maybe like in the more suburban areas, uh, but I'm surprised how much s the snow is cleared here. Like, uh, I guess they're used to having a lot of snowstorms here. So they're, they're, they take care of the snow and they and, and I guess they push it to the side and, and, and get rid of it however they do. But it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Don't get me wrong. It's still a lot of snow. Matter of fact, let me show you. Let me see if y'all can see from, from here. This is from my hotel room. Hold on. There we go. I mean, I guess you can't see too much, but, you know, you guys can get an idea. But if you guys see the streets, you know, it doesn't look like two feet of snow. You know, it looks like a lot of snow, but not necessarily two feet. But, yeah, man, uh, I, I, I'm definitely looking forward to this uh, situation. Again, I, I wasn't looking forward to coming here, but I know this is a situation where... 10, 5, 10, 20 years from now, I'm going to be laughing like, yo, bro, you remember you used to have to go to Minnesota to cover boxing events, to cover these Dominicans when they were throwing them out there, when you was telling them to bring them to New York? So I I'm looking forward to this, and uh, let let let's see how, how much further the journey goes. So I'm currently walking from my hotel to the weigh-in. It's an eight-minute walk. Now, I could have took an Uber. It was a four-minute drive. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to enjoy this fucking cold. And uh, hope you understand the sarcasm on enjoy. But I'm like, you know what? If I'm in Minnesota, I'm going to deal with the cold. I'm going to walk to this way. And I'm going to take this eight-minute walk. And by the way, that smoke coming out my mouth. Ain't no hookah smoke. This is straight up Minnesota Midwest type cold, you know? It's colder than a pimp's heart out here, bro. It is freezing. It is like I feel like if I threw a snowball right now, if I picked up, if I picked up one of those snow right there and threw it a snowball at somebody, my hand would go with it. That's how cold it is out here. Uh, I'm, I came prepared. I'm wearing. I'm laid up. But that don't mean the shit ain't cold out here, man. It, this, it's freezing, right? Right? Oh man, that's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, no, they're saying that they 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 not letting people in certain people in the shelters. I mean, I don't know what's the situation here in Minnesota, but that's fucked up. If they're not letting people in shelters in this kind of weather, 
Uh, I, I, I don't know what's that, but I hope the city does something about that. It is way too cold for any homeless person, anybody, person. I don't care what your money is, situation is. You should not be sleeping outside in this conditions. Again, I'm taking this eight minute walk just to get a sense of how cold it gets out here in Minnesota. First time here. Probably gonna be the last time I'm out here in the winter at least. You know what I'm saying? I may come out here again. They do a fight in the summer and there's a fighter I specifically wanna cover, like how I'm here specifically for Elvis. But I highly doubt I'll be back here again in the winter. Even if it's a fighter I wanna cover. You know, I might I may have to be like take a pass. It depends, it depends, it depends. Let, let's hope, let's hope that once they start bringing these Dominicans to New York, they realize and respect the Dominican dollar and they start bringing these fights to New York. But yeah, man, look, look at the look at the streets out here. Look at the streets. These are the streets. This is basically empty out here. But but this this is what I'm saying. Like, yo, they they shoveled real well. Like everything is very well plowed and organized here. It's very quiet. This is city. This is like their version of downtown. I'm from New York, so my downtown is always gonna be bigger and stuff like that so but i gotta say i'm very impressed with the i, I don't know if the if i'm saying it right the civil service work out here or whatever the sanitation i don't know who takes care of the snow out here i'm very impressed because down from the streets to the sidewalks it's pretty clear so this walk isn't as bad i'm not stepping up over as much snow as i thought i would but yeah, nah, it, it's cold as shit out here. It is cold as shit. And uh, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm definitely not happy about it. But, uh, you know, I got to make it work. I'm out here. Uh, I could have took an Uber. But like the man I am, decided to take this walk. But all right, guys. I'm actually approaching a, the, the place where the weigh-in is going to be. So I'm going to holla at you guys. And I will definitely, uh, you, this is probably going to be posted after the weigh-in. So you probably, guys, are probably going to catch what happens after. I don't know when I'm going to post this. But I'm about to step in now. I'll holler at you guys. Peace. Coming back from the weigh-in, man. Yo, as y'all can see, it's nighttime out here. Yo, I had the fucking time of my life, bro. Uh, as, I, as you guys saw, I dropped a few interviews. You know, I got to interview Matias. I got to interview Ponce. I got to interview Elvis. I was gonna get an interview with Adorno, but uh, you know, at that when, when, at that moment when I saw Adorno, I had just seen Elvis. I was like, yo, you know, got excited. Saw the voice of the Dominican boxing. You know what I'm saying? Got excited. So he was chopping it up with me off camera, like you know, just talking with me. And you know, I was like, fuck it. He was like super excited to see me, happy. So quick, quick funny story about Elvis. One, he uh, he left his Dominican flag in his room. So I, I had my Dominican flag with him. So the Dominican flag y'all see him up in the ring with, I mean, at the weigh-in, that's my Dominican flag. That's the flag that be up when I'm live. And, and, and that's the flag that, was, that be up on, on the back of my screen. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he forgot his. So I was like, yo, here's mine. Boom. He had it. He threw it on. But when he first saw me, he had not weighed in. He seen me with a mean face. Like I thought, I thought, I thought I was about to hook off on me. I was like, yo, what's up? By the way, it's cold as shit. Why is my hoodie down, man? Uh hold on one second. It's too cold, man. Y'all gonna have to y'all gonna have to deal with me waiting. Y'all waiting. My fucking health is more important than y'all entertainment. Y'all got this fucking uh, Dominican ass motherfucker in the Midwest freezing his ass off to give y'all good content. So y'all gonna have to wait to put my hoodie up. Uh, anyways, so like I was saying, so Elvis sees me with a mean face. Looks like he's about to hook off for me. I'm like, damn, what I do to Elvis? I'm trying to think what I said about him in the live. He just gives me a pound, keeps it moving. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like I, I, I ain't even take, I ain't even make none of it. I'm like, he probably hungry, this, that, whatever. His manager comes, and I give him the flag. I'm like, yo, here's the flag, whatever, blah blah. You know, he's like, all right, cool, cool. 
I'll make sure he wears it, you know. So I go take a seat. After that in crazy intense face-off, Elvis Rodriguez, you know, they did the face-off with Adorno and they talking shit to each other and all that. Afterwards, I run into I run into him in downstairs, not upstairs with with a way in his ass. As soon as he sees me, this is when I was about to approach Adorno for an interview, but I ain't, I ain't see Elvis was there. So Elvis sees me, he goes, yo, my bad, bro. You know, I was just in the zone. You know, then I see you. That's why I was just quick. And I was like, bro, you don't got to worry. Apologize. Because I kind of figured like, yo, these fighters, when they hungry, when they thirsty, and they know they about to see their opponent, they get into a zone. You know what I'm saying? And like, he, he I, I think he fought, felt like, Damn, Broadway be out here really supporting the Dominicans. This is the type of energy I gave him. So he was like mad apologetic. I was like, bro, we good, man. Like, I get it. This isn't my first way and I know how fighters be. And then he was like, so whatever. He was asking me how I got here. How was the flight? This, that, and the third. So we had a whole full-blown conversation. And uh, I'm going to make a long story short. Afterwards, you know, we went to his hotel room. I was chilling with his mom's. Me, him, his mom, his trainer, I mean, not his trainer, his manager, uh, a couple assistant trainers was with us as well. Um, you know, we were chopping it up, chilling. And then I was like, yo, bro, shouldn't we let this guy rest? Like, he got a fight tomorrow. And his manager was like, yeah, that's a good idea, man. We're we gonna, we gonna let him rest. So, so I go downstairs and we run into Freddie Roach. Me, Elvis manager, and one of his assistant trainer. Yo, Freddie Roach is telling us some old school fucking stories, bro. Like, he's telling us how within like the first month of him opening his gym, Muhammad Ali walks in and asks him, can he train there? Like, and he goes, the crazy shit is, is that when he first opened the gym, right? Uh, that... People were telling him, why are you going to open a fucking boxing gym? You're not going to make no money out of a boxing gym. And he was like, you never know when the next Muhammad Ali is going to walk in the gym. And a month later, the literal Muhammad Ali walks in. How crazy is that? Like, and he says, like, about a month or two later, Manny Pacquiao comes in. And Manny Pacquiao comes and says, hey, man, uh, there's rumors out here that you're very good at the mitts. He said they did mitts one time, and he was like, I knew he was the truth from then. He goes, I knew he was the truth from then. I'm like, really? He's like, yup. So then he started giving me, you know, story. I, I don't want to give it all up because, you know, a lot of it was private conversation. He was telling me conversations he had with Tyson, James Tony, how uh, him and Emmanuel Stewart, you know, like were both trained by Eddie Futch. Eddie Futch is one of the greatest trainers of all time. And he trained Freddie Roach and Emmanuel Stewart. And they both became each one of the greatest fighters of all time. I mean, trainers of all time. How sick is that? Then he started telling me stories about Customato and, 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 and just these old gems. Yo, like, yo, I, we, I literally spent about two hours just talking with Freddie. It, it got to the point where, like, everybody kind of wanted to leave. Not me. I wanted to keep staying talking. Y'all know me. I'm the, I'm a journalist. I'm catching these gems, man. He's telling me stories about the clitch goals, um, sparring stories about who got the better of who, who beat who in the amateurs, how he talked to me, uh, how he fought uh, Hector Camacho and um, Bobby Chacon. And uh, he talked to me about Ray Leonard. He said that uh, he was an Olympic alternate in that 76 team, right? In that uh, 1976 Olympic team. And uh, <laughs> when he, when Sugar Ray Leonard walked in the fucking, in, in the, on the bus and he was like, he saw a little ass Freddie, he was like, wait a minute, we letting kids on the bus now? Or something like that, something to the effect like, we letting little kids do be in the bus. And he said he got up and was like, because Freddie about that life. Freddie was telling me crazy stories. Again, I can't share everything. I can't give it all up because, you know, it's private conversation. But he said he got up. He wanted to scrap. 
He wanted to fight Ray Leonard. But, they, you know, like, people went, separated each other, separated them. And uh, he goes, eventually they became friends. He understood that, you know, God was joking. But, you know, Freddie, real dude. That, that's a man's man. Put it like that. Like, so, man, just a dope story, bro. Like, I, I know y'all feel the energy off the camera. Man, Freddie Roach is a solid, solid individual. He gave me fire-ass interview. I'm looking forward to, uh, to to talking to him a little bit. I I, I, only, I only got a little bit of hit him on camera, only because he said, uh, well, his team said they don't really. Uh, he doesn't really like doing interviews. He doesn't really like being on camera like that. But he's a great talker. I, I you know, I wish I, I wish I I somehow could have gotten comfortable. But it, honestly, it's okay. It's okay. I didn't get anything out of. Uh, on camera he i gave him a dominican boxing shirt he was like yo this is th he goes i love the shirt it looks good he was like the material he, he kept grabbing the material saying how good it was saying how you know he's happy that i'm supporting elvis that elvis need all the support he can and that elvis is you know super duper talented and the people are sleeping on him and so i i listen i had the time of my fucking life uh, interview Subriel Matias, Jeremia Sponce, uh, Samson Lukowitz. I had a great time, man. I, I, I'm really enjoying myself out here. And this is literally day one. Listen, again, I walked there and back to my hotel just to experience the cold and, and, and feel what Minnesota feels like, man. But yeah, man, I'm back at the hotel now, but... Hopefully you guys enjoyed my vlog. Uh, again, this is the first vlog I ever do, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I definitely will be making more of them. All right, guys. Peace.